Hello! This is a long do video about how we travel in a van with a dog. I get a lot of questions about how picnic our dog handles the van life and truth to be told it's going great really amazing so today I want to talk a bit about the equipment we use uh, about uh, I have a, a little piece of paper here um, about you know just like planning and how we do things let's start with the equipment we use every day so for picnic we need four types of leashes um, we have the shortest one then we have one uh, that's still short but not as short and then we have the retractive uh, leash and then the fourth one is 10 meters long uh, leash that's perfect for the beach another use for the leash is also to keep picnic around the van when we are parked in like a safe spot and we want him to lay outside he's a super sunshine dog even though he has long coat and he's dark so he gets warm really fast he just loves laying on the sun and if he doesn't want to lay on the sun he goes under our van so uh, it depends where we are parked if we are parked really somewhere where we are completely alone and there's no path going near our van we would sometimes have him on a 10 meters leash even though that's super rare if we speak about colors now so he has one just like basic one that he has on most of the time and then we have a harness which i'm super mad because after a year and a half it's already like falling apart so we need to stitch it and stuff but uh, the harness comes in handy in in cases uh, as i explained when we keep picnic around the van during the day and that brings me to the third color and uh, i know a lot of people don't agree with but it made a huge huge improvement uh, for us and it's a choke collar we really use this only in big cities and like we can see the progression in the last five months so at the beginning we had to put uh, this choke collar on picnic basically every time we went to the city now it's really rare and like it, we have it in the backpack just in case if he gets overstimulated because when we put it on him immediately he calms down and it's much easier for him like to be calm and then we have also e-collar uh, which we use rarely i think we use it only two times on the trip because we never got the hang of it that's the truth before we hit the road we also saw that a lot of van lifers with dogs have these bowls that have some safety thingy and then if the bowl flips the water doesn't spill and um, we were actually searching for it but never got one so we just have a bowl double bowl from home and for me it works perfectly it's true that at the beginning we were spilling water a lot because we forgot to like put it out before we started driving but now it's great we got used to it regarding the food we did take a lot of food when we hit the road and then we had to buy a new one and it just had all happened so fast so we didn't have time to figure out the logistics how to get the same food to portugal and we went to the pet store bought some in the same price range and now he's eating that and uh truth to be told i don't think we will uh, complicate much with that we will just buy food on the road uh, picnic sometimes gets also like uh, treats so we always keep some treats that we buy just for dogs and of course he licks all the yogurt cups and all of that and uh, yes at the beginning picnic was super fond of sleeping on our bed and uh, that is really changing because now he loves his little space underneath the table uh, we call it the house so uh, we also have a command in Slovene it's Vahisha it means he needs to go to the house and stay there as you know van is pretty small so if I'm cooking and Clement is doing something else and picnic wants to lay on the floor like really uh, comfortably you say in the house so we can actually move around we just have one this dog bed we bought it on the road and I like it even though it's really nothing special because we can 
just clean it with water and scrub it with a brush uh, and some soap and yeah we do that like every month and it becomes like new From the equipment we also have two muzzles one is like a big one and one is the small one um, we just basically use the muzzles on public transport when it's needed uh, and i usually use the small one because it's super handy to put in the backpack but regarding other equipment we do have some stuff with us that we actually never used <laughs> like i bought picnic this uh water protection something something and <laughs> Fresh chip off the block. Watch my head spin. I got awkward thoughts and a neck twitch. I fall off the knot. Then I get up. I'm this slot to watch. That's a Netflix. I stop with the pot. Got my head straight, but mama kept singing. But it saved that noodle. Cause I kept drawing on the same old doodle. Mine got lost inside of all this pseudo. I play golf now, so I'm a white poodle. So now if we just uh, talk a bit about how we spend our time with a dog and how it actually works in, in reality. Regarding driving, I wanted to emphasize that we don't drive a lot. We definitely are slow travelers. The longest we drove, I think in the last two months, was uh, four hours. He's just not like that comfortable he he hears every sound he is very alert all the time we have this kind of like a seat belt for dogs we don't have a cage for picnic and um, truthfully he doesn't like to be in the back of the van because there's like even more sounds he wants to be he feels very safe next to me so he usually lays next to us um, i don't know U european regulations are probably a bit strict more strict but that's how we do it. Regarding the heat, we haven't experienced problems yet. Actually only once in Sevilla when it was 33 degrees Celsius and it was way too hot for him. So we really paid attention. Like during the day, we went to a park to shade where it was like at least a bit windy. During the summer, it might be problematic. And actually we are planning if the heat will be too strong for a picnic, we will just go to the mountains. I also wanted to talk about leaving him in the van. Probably for people who don't live in a van, it's weird. Like you would leave your dog in a van for like hours, but you need to know that this is our house and we spend almost like 24 seven together, like all the time. And sometimes you just need to go to the library or to do some errands, or sometimes we go to the cities without him because we know it can be stressful for him or it will be just like easier for us to arrange the public transport and all of that. And I must say we are quite lucky regarding leaving him in the car. He is very comfortable in the van and he can stay like I would leave him for five hours without a problem. Anything longer than that I would already be thinking like will he be okay but once we left him for eight hours he was completely fine. I get a lot of questions about cleaning because he has very long hair, a lot of hair and uh, I say often that it, we don't have a lot of problems with that but oftentimes I think hmm, maybe just our standards are so low uh, for cleaning that we don't notice it. The way we clean is that we have a tiny broom and we sweep, swept, sweep, sweep, swap, swap the floor um, two times per day, let's say. Just, it's super quick. And then the hair that uh, are elsewhere on the like seats or yeah stuff, we just vacuum it with our little vacuum cleaner. And it's easy and I don't know. Uh, we don't have as much problem with hair. Sometimes it is in our food, but rarely and we don't mind. So regarding cleaning, we actually don't uh, wash picnic because it's very traumatizing experience for him. I will show you now because he's a bit stinky and I will wash him. Otherwise, regarding cleanliness, the biggest problem is sand. When he, we are on the beach and he gets wet and the sand gets into his coat, it's, <laughs> it's pretty difficult to get it out. So we actually just let him dry and then the sand falls off of him. We don't really complicate, right? We don't complicate, yes. If he is dirty from the mud, we have 
just a uh, old towel and we wipe him and then um, one thing I would add to our things that we have in the van is for sure like a coat that when it's really raining heavily his fur can be protected and uh, because it like especially in the winter when he would get wet it was pretty like ugh. it wasn't good when he was drying for two days in the van because there were no other possibilities to dry him so picnic let's get you Clean? Bravo, Redo, you're so cool. Super. No, picnic, no, no, no. Super, 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 super. Yeah, yeah, super, super. No, no, no. Hey. I will need your help. Super. Super. Frieden, Sikuja! And then, uh, regarding walking and activities, since living in the van doesn't really give you a stable routine, uh, it means also that our days with picnic uh, are just so different. When we have super busy working day, it's usually three to four walks per day. Uh, two of them are a bit longer and two are more like just uh, for him to go pee and just like relax outside a bit. And it's also good for us to take a walk. If we do some activities together, you know, sometimes we are um, hiking or exploring since morning until afternoon. So it really depends. Uh, a lot of people also ask me, is he a high energy dog? I would say no, he's like medium energy, which is just mwah, perfect. Meaning that if we go to, to the nature, to the forest, if we go to a dog park and, park and throw him the ball, he gets super energetic and he runs around and he just goes crazy. When it's time to calm down, he completely calms down, he lays in his corner and he sleeps. And he's like this cute little calm dog. There was a question I got on Instagram regarding what's the best thing when you travel with a dog and the most annoying thing. And I would say for sure a plus is that you have your best buddy traveling with you. That's the reason I wanted the dog to have a dog with me to like go for adventures together. And it's just so amazing to do that. Uh, I feel also so grown up, you know, it's just like, this is what me, when I was little, that was my dream, to be like an adult with a dog and you go hiking and you go to the beach with your dog and you throw him the ball. <laughs> uh, and the biggest uh, negative thing when you have a dog and you travel with a dog is definitely you have an additional thing you need to think, a, a life thing, a live creature. You have additional live creature you need to take care of. Meaning if it's rain, if it's cold, if you're sick, if whatever, you need to walk the dog. If you have a lot of work, you need to walk the dog. You need to give him attention. Of course, some responsibility comes with having a dog, especially on the road. That is it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And I would love to hear your questions or just comments. How do you travel with your dog? Is there something I forgot to mention or you would just love to know? write it down in the comments make sure to follow our adventures on instagram too uh, if you want good photography and daily updates yeah check it out and i wanted to tell you something else <laughs> uh, i am actually launching a patreon membership where i will share more from behind the scenes more about how i you know how we plan our uh, trips how i do photography anything you will want to know i really want to create a small family who are interested in simple slow living uh, just as i am and i will be happy if you show me support there i will post the link down below have a great day and see you in the next video bye